For this next segment, uh, we went to Facebook uh, and we asked you guys, what is the cringiest live show moment? What is a cringy live show moment that you've okay. seen happen on stage? What's a time where you crinkled your toes in disbelief? Um, some of these are decently cringy. A lot of them are just kind of funny, you know? Mm -hmm. um, if you also, everyone, if you want to go and be a part of this segment, you can go like our Facebook page. And when we ask questions, you can answer if you have something relevant to say. And you might be featured. <laughs> Yeah, um, compete for top fan. Compete for top fan. Um, so yeah, this is uh, cringy things that you've seen live on stage. So the first one comes from top fan <laughs> uh, James Clay, and he says a guy that I used to go to music college with uh, used to be a typical four chord indie rock singer has now turned into a glam rock frontman. Let's go. Uh, he now has his own glam rock band. And I checked a live clip of them online the other day, and there's a video of him and the guitarist of his band chugging a bottle of wine on stage and proceeding to shout at everyone, we're bringing rock and roll back, baby. <laughs> <There's> a, <laughs> that's like the least rock star thing you could slam right. is wine. Like, yeah, that's yeah, not, right. it's not sick. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we're- Everyone grab your shot today. <laughs> <laughs> you we just fucking forever did it takes so long to chug a bottle of wine on stage. <laughs> Rocky Road <laughs> Struggling. Give me a sec. <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> yeah it's a little different than jack daniels that's for sure um next up is from nathan hills and he says when they say give it up for yourselves is a personal pet peeve uh, he said, I came to the show to watch the band perform. I ain't doing anything worth applauding. Just watching the show. That's very funny. He's just, like, just, he's just analytically. And I, why I, would I do that? I thought of that, though, when I was like, why would you say that? Yeah, give it up for yourselves. You you made it to the venue. I think I think it's mind games because it's it's really pompous to say give it up for us. Yeah. So you say you try to trick them into making it seem like it's for them. Right. Give it up for yourselves, which is code for we just fucking killed it. Huh? We want to hear you clap for us, yeah. but we don't want to say that. And, and start clapping in three seconds. Hit the Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear you. Give it up for yourselves. <laughs> and cut that part out so it looks like it was for them. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know exactly. That's Playing what the it's for. long game here. Um, from Adam Engel, he says, th This is kind of funny. I never thought about this, but bands who do fake encores to the so cringe when bands just walk off stage and act like they're done and they come back out and play their biggest hit. He says, I've been to many shows where the crowds don't chant one more song because they know. Uh, they aren't done and they're just going to come back anyways. And it made me think, I was like, okay, so yeah, there, there is a point where like, if you're the Beatles and you play your songs, you go off stage. All right, we're done. Bye. And the fucking place erupts because they're like, no, we want more. Like right. they actually do. It's like, you guys got to yeah, go a, out a there. Real like if you don't go out there, they're going to riot mm -hmm. type of shit. Whereas, yeah, nowadays it's just like, all right, thank you, bye. And then they walk away for like a minute and then they it's come like back expect, out. It's expected kind of, yeah. But it's planned. Right, yeah. So it's like, I don't think it's cringe to plan it, but it is kind of like an interesting cool thing that's not a real a little, encore, it, yeah, I, guess. I guess. It is kind of a fake Breaking encore. it down, it is a little cringe, I guess. <laughs> in, in hindsight of like walking off and then waiting. Because I guess it, it puts you in that spot too because it's like, it is cool if you walk off and they do start chanting it and, you, and you're like, okay, I guess we got to come back. But you also have to be prepared for that. So it's yeah. like, do we go off before our last song? Because if we play that song, 
And then they want an encore. We don't have anything left. Right. <laughs> so it's like, do we save it in right. case there's an encore? But then if they don't encore, you can't like, play yeah, your best like, song. You can't come back out and be like, do you guys mind if we do another one? Can we do one more? <laughs> we uh, actually were, we were trying to trick you into doing one more. Um, that is, that's a funny thing. I've never thought about that. Yeah. Next up, Eric Nashim says, this was at a Battle of the Bands I played years ago. There was this punk band that played, and for the last song, the front man had two people bring up a giant banner on stage that just said society spray painted on it he then proceeded to shout this is what i think of society and then started violently ripping the banner apart nobody cheered there was just awkward glances from everybody in the room let's see that's cringe that's like that's <laughs> nice that is a big if i go to the i want to go to a restaurant i order a cringe that's what i expect to get <laughs> Not like some of those, like, oh, that's a little awkward. That sucks. Yeah. Like the guy doing it, and everyone's like, <laughs> oh my like, God. What are you? Also, yeah, it's got to be the word that's like the most like liberal arts student thing to, yeah. oh, this is what I think of society. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That was my performance piece of Society Bad. Uh, I'll be answering questions for the next 10 minutes. If anybody has, ask me about philosophy. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, man? You're just ripping this is up. what a- I think of this. <laughs> Tearing paper after doing that is the lamest shit ever, dude. That's a guy who calls himself an anarchist. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, society. That's what I think of your rules. Put that out, put that out, put that out. I'm gonna get a fine. Holy shit. All right. Next up, William Kraft says local band played a festival. Not sure how, but they somehow landed like third to last slot. There was 18 bands on the bill. The vocalist spent the whole day getting trashed. Then, when they got on stage, he spent half the set babbling incoherently, (laughs) somehow got through the set, and at the end, he jumped over the drum set at the drummer, (laughs) who proceeded (laughs) to beat the fuck out of him. (laughs) The drummer beat the guy up? Yes. The band broke their shit down and took it off stage as he was laying there. (laughs) The icing on the cake was he then rolled off the stage, (laughs) which was a raised stage. Oh, oh, brutal. He says, I don't remember the band's name, but I'll never forget that performance. Damn, dude. Just imagine it's this drunk as fuck dude lunging at a drummer. The drummer's like, ah, ah, That drummer ah, drummer has been waiting for his moment. Grabs his snare drum and just like walks over him and leaves. Dude, that's pretty funny. That's, that sucks. I, yeah. uh, I I was I played a show a little bit recently where one of the bands that was playing there was a a dude doing setup and like soundtrack and stuff and it, it was it was funny I've never seen the like he looked like kind of tight going into it when he, he came out and he has like epic hair up in like a bun yeah. and he he comes out and he takes off his shirt and he's got all these like Maori tattoos and stuff and he undoes his hair and it's like this thick mane of black hair and you're like okay like this dude's coming out of your heart as fuck and he like flips on this fan and it starts like blowing his hair up I'm like fuck okay let's go they start doing sound check and he goes uh, uh, <laughs> He's just fucking drunk. Uh, yeah, just like literally like the drunkest gargle you could imagine. Oh I was my like, God. oh no, <laughs> what happened? You came out so majestically. Yeah, I was so ready for this guy to just hit like some like Mongol throat singing or something. And then he <laughs> does that. I said Mongol throat, Mongolian throat singing. Uh, and then he comes out and is like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> that was brutal, man. That's so funny. Um, Dylan Holt says, one of my guitarists decided to introduce each band member during the set (laughs) at a death metal show. It was our debut, and we knew the people in the audience. That's my fucking nightmare, bro, right there. I, I I, always think that that is the cringiest shit. Even if they're, like, the most famous people ever, I cannot stand. Uh, uh, J- T- Tony Costanza on drums, everybody. D- Derek Pumba on rhythm. Cynthia Gagglestone. Woo! Gagglestone. And Pete Demamarkers. <laughs> I don't... 
I don't even know that one. <laughs> Just, like, dude, I fucking cannot stand it when that happens. No, every time I'm like, ah, uh, who cares? You can say any name. It doesn't matter. Who cares for this part, dude? Well, the only time. Well, that's such, it's, it is such a weird thing to do because I was going to say the only time you would do that is if it was like Slash. Yeah, uh, somebody who is but it's like who we in all... a mask the whole time and it's like, Prince, everybody. And you're like, whoa, that's awesome. But, yeah, what the fuck? How are you here? But it's like, a, a Charlie Gags. <laughs> From what? TikToker? What is that? I don't even know. Charlie Gags? What does that mean? Is you related to Gagglesteam? Oh. <laughs> At a death metal show is wild. Too. That's so funny. Yeah, what's the inner Ludi part? Or they're like, you're like Cynthia, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that he said they knew the people in the audience too yeah, was that's just like the better icing. I forgot that part. That's so funny. And this is Cynthia's son. It's just somebody, Mark. We know <laughs> in the audience. All right. Next, this comes from Nikolai Bell. He says, I saw a guy poke himself in the back of his mouth and puke into a cup on stage. Uh, not really sure why he did it, but it was weird. It wasn't even a lot of puke either. Kind of disappointing. <laughs> that took a turn. <laughs> he's like, he thought he was about to see something awesome. And this guy, guy just like uh, gagging lightly. <laughs> lightly gagging into a cup is yeah, really I mean, funny. So, sometimes you got to puke, you know. Sometimes too, if you, uh, uh, the like tipping point between a bad night and a fine night is that decision to make yourself puke because <laughs> you can if you don't you're tipping and you're gonna be a drunk mess but if you hit that point you're like just one quick gag i'm just bleh, i'm good <laughs> you're oh my right God. back to the game yeah it's just funny some guy on stage is like give me a second <laughs> <laughs> fine i'm fine uh, next is from James Holt. It says, My band once did a last minute cover I was not happy doing as it hadn't been practiced. Someone said we ruined the song and our <laughs> vocalist called him a C word. This was the third song into a 30 minute set and the room was silent for the rest of it. Which reminds me. Do you remember when we watched? I'm so happy. I already know what you're going to say. Yeah, I was know, about to bring it up. Yeah, the squid hat please, guy. Yes. Please <laughs> I was, bring I was it about up. to ask you if we've told this story. I don't not. know if we have. Oh, this is awesome. We were. It was the American Safari Tour. It was a rest repose, the home team. Uh, and we were at this show, and the local opening band. Uh, went up there and they started to perform and they were, you know, just doing like metalcore stuff, whatever. And then they played like a couple covers and then <laughs> the vocalist is like, I think we should play it. And the, the drummer audibly is like, no, I'm not playing it. And he's like, I think we should, I think we should give it a shot. And he's like, I'm not going to play it. And then the guitarist <laughs> comes in with the riff and it's fucking Eiffel 65. I'm blue. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they just start playing it, and then the drummer's like, "No, we're not gonna." And then they start playing it, and the vocalist br like brings out this squid hat. It's like this big bright neon squid hat. Puts it on it and turns around and proceeds to hit the <laughs> over Eiffel 65. Yeah, I'm blue. I was blue. I wait. He's like, dude, no fucking shot. This is happening right in front of us. Uh, they were like, dude, the drummer was so unbelievably pissed. And then the guitarist not being in the fight and then just going, boom, boom, boom. just coming in with the riff was so fucked up. <laughs> like, they're in the middle of deciding, and he's like, I'm just gonna play it, bro. Fuck this. I'm gonna save the show. Yeah, I'm blue. <laughs> bro, oh my god. It was unbelievable. This is the worst part about that, too, is that they were super fucking nice people. And they came up before that and they asked me. Uh to do a feature with them because they were covering a wage war song. And so I came up and I did the the river with them, I think. And then right after that, they did that. And I was like, oh my God, this is unbelievable, bro. And wasn't it like the very <laughs> end? Wasn't there was some like the like last malfunction song. with the end of that song? Oh yeah, they didn't even finish it. It, it, like, it was yeah. like, oh, I think we're done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. I forgot about it. It was like a minute and a half into the song. And then the, it's like, it's gonna be... Focus turns around and goes, I think I think we're done. I think that's it. We're done. And, and then, then they go and do a fucking heavy breakdown. Just play a break. Just, we gotta save this somehow. Play a breakdown. <laughs> oh, that was rough, dude. I, I wonder if they remember that night fondly. Because that was brutal. Oh, shit. Uh, hopefully they had better nights after that. It was so good. Because they were dude. nice, and that was rough to watch. It was so good. <laughs> I <All right>. am blue. <laughs> 
So this next one comes from Dickie Diner, and he says, 55-year-old David Draymond doing the abuse breakdown live. <laughs> the abuse breakdown. Yeah, does he do it live? Have I don't you think seen I've, this? I've never seen it live. Oh, my God, dude. I've, that, I've that, seen that it, That does bro. sound like cringe. Especially it's when you're, it's like... the wildest thing. Dude. Like, you could probably give one of those and, like, give it your all, and it's yeah. like, whoa, that was pretty powerful. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. dude, on tour every night, whoa, mommy, don't do it again. Seriously, fucking knock it off. That's literally what it was <laughs> yeah, like. Just like probably so sick of this. Part. He was like standing still, just like this, and he's like, "Wow, mommy, don't do it again, mommy, please, Whoa. mommy." <laughs> like, <laughs> calm it down, mama. <laughs> Seriously, knock it off. I don't care that I'm grounded. I'm not eating Brussels sprouts. <laughs> it is a weird thing to watch a, a fully grown man. You think they would just like figure out a way to like skip past that part live or like do like a well, do short what they version. do for the radio edit? Yeah, just go bump. Yeah. But then people are probably be like, "Where the fan and play the cool part?" <laughs> Whoa, mommy, <don't> do <laughs> I'll be a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid, sadistic <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> never, never not funny. Uh, now I'm just thinking of like a stripper that's like that's her, that's her song. Yeah. Just that section. <laughs> just, Whoa, mommy. Be a good boy, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> do, do it again. Spin me with <laughs> Am I a good enough boy for you, mommy? Oh, that's very funny. All right. Now, um, next up, Alec <laughs> Harris says, "Guy threw up on stage, wiped it with his T-shirt, and threw it into the crowd." Yeah. It got stuck on the rafters and was dripping it down. Oh, we all formed a circle around it so we didn't get throw up on us. And he kept saying, that's metal, baby. They got kicked out as soon as their set was over. God damn it, dude. Bro, that's disgusting. Ugh, imagine. Oh, what a dick move. Like, yeah, how do you not feel immense shame throwing up on the stage? And then you're like, I'm going to clean it up and give it to them. Yeah, I'm just going to throw it in the crowd. You guys want this probably, right? <laughs> Dude, what a worst case scenario. It's just dripping into the... Like, oh, don't, don't stand under there. It's gross, dude. Oh, that's nasty, dude. Well, it's also like... Because of like the acidity in your in like stomach acid with throw mm -hmm. up. If you get in your eyes, it could actually like make you Burn go blind and shit. Oh, epic. So it's like if you look up, you just get puke in just your eye. Fucking like, 28 days later shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up from Top Fan, Me Shoulder says... Ooh. Halfway through the set, uh, he... Whoever he is, stopped the show to plead for his girlfriend not to leave him. Oh. And went on this long tirade of how he would change for her and how he needs her. Then to top it off, says he'd even leave this band for her. Although hilarious, a bit cringy too. Uh, no, that's way more than a bit cringy. That's crazy. Imagine he's, watching he's a band. In the band. Imagine watching a band. I'm assuming it, it's the singer. Stops and just like, please, Margaret. I would kill to hear that with like a Midwest emo intro. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, she just a, didn't yeah. understand. She didn't understand. This is like a Midwest emo song. I'll do anything. I know I can change. <laughs> I'll even leave this band for you. <laughs> Sarah, please. I swear. You're everything to me. Um, next is from Adam Walker. And he says, a, a Tesseract gig. Where they told the audience to stop moshing because we are not that kind of band. <laughs> Dude, I think I remember that. Hearing you remember about that. Hearing yeah. about that? That's very funny. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird thing because usually you want people to mosh at your show. It's very funny to tell like, people what they can and can't do while listening to your music. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, we don't do not. that. Stop feeling the rhythm, asshole. Yeah. <laughs> it's for your ears only. Sit down. It's a little strange. It's um. Funny. Next up, Retisha Balouche says, when local bands have inside jokes between themselves on stage, but they do it through the mic. Uh, mm -hmm. It's seen it more than once, and it's always awkward. Your banter is not as funny as you think, especially if it relates to something the crowd wasn't even present for. Yelling, hey, Danny, where's all the fisters at? Am I right? In reference to one gig five years ago in a different town and then laughing about it while people stand around confused is super weird. Yeah, that's, that's a fair criticism. That's that's something. That's a little there, weird. There's a few things with like the when you tour and you see you play with some different bands and you kind of 
black those memories out. <laughs> it's like when you it's like when you have that awkward stage presence and so your stage presence is talking to your band mm-hmm. instead of addressing the audience. It's like Did uh, we should oh, say man. something here. Hey Danny, uh <laughs> Dude, uh, fucking uh the old RR vocalist used to do that shit. The uh, uh Tanner. Oh yeah. Yeah, he had yeah. that problem too. He would do that. We're just like what are you just talking to Fluff right now? Yeah. <laughs> Look at the audience, dog. Hey, how, you, how you doing, Fluff? <laughs> yeah, exactly. How's just it like, going, man? How's that uh, new plug-in treating you? <laughs> <laughs> on stage, bro. Come on, now. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, uh, Isaac Shavara says, A very serious deathcore vocalist once told the crowd, The government is full of lies. Question everything. So I yelled back, Why? <laughs> He threw him off and he started laughing and then took a band a uh, second to gain their composure, which is just a funny thing to... Yeah, that's not cringy. That's it's not just cringy. Good. It's that's just, just kind of funny. funny. Yeah. It's just like, government's full of lies. Question everything. Why? Like, fuck. He's got it's a like, good... God damn it. I didn't think it would get this far. Point. Fuck. Let's go to the next song. I've never been questioned on this statement. Go to the next song. Uh, this funny. next one comes from Nard. Cool. And he says, me and my band played a show alongside a grindcore band once, and every song they played in their set started or ended with porn. And not like a phrase or two, like a full minute of moaning, dirty talk, and the sound of wop as it echoed through the venue. He said, I looked around the venue as they played, and everyone was confused and highly uncomfortable. Yeah, first of all, that's not grindcore. That is porno grind, literally. That's what the <laughs> genre is. But yeah, be funny. it's a little weird. Maybe the, the sound guy had like a dual splitter and it was like their backing <laughs> tracks and he was just watching porn. And so every time the back tracks weren't playing, it was just the audio of the porn he was watching playing. Just, he didn't know it was like going through the house speakers yeah. or something. One, two, three, four. You <laughs> hear the, the pussy pounding and the metronome hitting at the same time. Like, <laughs> what is in happening? sync yeah what a strange thing to do yeah it's very odd um i once uh, so there was this band i played with at this like sh- this fucking three people at show and i don't remember what the band was called but there was four very old men and i'm talking mm-hmm. like 60s to 70s okay and like they were all wearing like mormon outfits mm-hmm. Just like the the white shirts and the right. the you know ties and everything, and then their singer was this like fifteen year old tall as fuck looking like athlete, <laughs> and the rest of them were all old as shit, and they were a like death grind band, <laughs> and evolving. in between the songs they would like say like dumb shit and like they would say stuff like the song goes out to all the women and then like the three <laughs> girls would be like yeah and then they'd be like it's called fuck hole oh my god and like this next song is called chicken fucker <laughs> and it's like holy the shit fuck? and then they would just be like <laughs> like a comedy sketch man bro oh for sure like, what the hell it was the weirdest shit what a strange situation <laughs> Ryan Hoover says Phil Anselmo's white power thing. Do you remember that? Mm, how can I forget? I, you know what I will say? That is pretty cringe. But you know what's even cringier than that is his excuse as to why he did it. Because he, was, he like, was like, I was drunk or something. No, he said that. Oh, I said white power because we were drinking white wine backstage, and I was just like, yeah. Wine power, like white wine power. It's like that uh, uh, is like so lame. That's dude. very funny. Yeah, that's like one of the the security. Like, oh the, yeah, like, Phil and Selma's backstage drinking wine, dude. And well, also too, yeah, you're you're zig heiling also. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, no, no, it's for white wine. I it's just where it's white wine. <laughs> I think he eventually finally did apologize. Oh uh, yeah, yeah maybe he misread Zinfandale and thought it said zig heil. <laughs> 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 Zinfandel, it is a German wine. I'm not being racist. Uh, Andrew Gooley says, "A girl. This is kind of sad. Girl at a middle school talent show played acoustic guitar. She was super nervous and started whimpering on stage. Oh. Snot bubbles and no. elongated." <gasps> 
Uh, but she kept strumming and she finished her set. So honestly, good respect, good for her. That would be a really <laughs> funny act to just do, though. Yeah, it if would you be. pretended to be like really, really. If you were like a comedy act, mm-hmm. yeah. And you're like sure. crying, but you're like s- s- nailing the note, but like in a sad singing voice. Right. That would actually be yeah, like, very funny. <clears throat> Dude, I had, a, I had a cringy performance moment in like, in, in like hindsight though, it was uh, something I did as a child. I was in the it was like the talent show for elementary school and me and my buddy did like a clown act mm. where I was on my pogo stick and he was on stilts and we dressed up like clowns and performed like a comedy routine okay. with like pies and like balloons in the faces and stuff and there were like you know intentional falls in the bit to like you know because it's like a slapstick clown thing and then I realized in hindsight that everyone just thought we were bad at what we were doing oh, no. <laughs> I did I thought my whole <laughs> life I was like I was such a good pro- like I was so awesome like we nailed like we practiced it perfectly and then I heard like I think my mom was retelling it and she's like yeah I remember when you like messed up in the t-. I was like what do you mean messed up she's like yeah everyone thought you guys like fucked up it's like that's no fuck yeah. this whole time everyone thought that's that was- not how we wanted our art to Damn. be interpreted that is a bummer to find yeah, that's probably why we didn't fucking win. Everyone thought we sucked. Damn, dude. <laughs> it was coordinated comedy, bro. That's a bummer, man. Yeah. But at least you tried, you know. Should have won, dude. Uh, Babishu Doyle says, The parents of one of my old band's singers came to a show. He announced them when they got there. He said, and I quote, My mom is here. She is hot. I would do her. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Where did this happen at exactly? What? Dude, what? That, that last add-on was crazy. Just like it's already strange. You're like, my mom's here and she's hot. Like fellas, I would fuck her. <laughs> Please. And everyone's looking at him. He's like, what? You said that last part out loud. <laughs> I want a stepdad. I also want to be my own stepdad. That's a wild thing to say. To announce that your mom's here. My mom is yeah. here, and I would also fuck her. That's pretty weird. Uh, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> what is up, Cincinnati? <laughs> All right, well, there it is. Brutal. There's um, crazy, cringy, funny things we've seen happen yeah. Y'all live. Y'all have experienced some, some weird shit. Weird shit. Impressed. Yeah, some definitely yeah. Some, weird, some weird shit for sure. Yeah. What was the last time we did one of these kind of videos? There was like someone who was like, yeah, I watched. I was at a punk show, and I watched a chick mm. give birth <laughs> in the pit. Like that was like what? What do you mean? You, yeah, why'd you watch it? <laughs> like what kind of? Away. What gets? What's more punk than uh, that? What's more punk than a pregnancy in public? It's a lot of alliteration. That is very punk. That is very punk. If you guys like what you're seeing, then please consider going to our Patreon and giving us your money. That way, we can keep the lights on. We can keep the camera guy fed, and we'll really appreciate it. Thank you. Link in the description below.